Hello. Uh, what I'd like to show you today is just some of the basic features and tools of Photoshop CS6, which is what we're going to be using to edit our photos. Uh, what I've drawn up here is a cast shot of Freaks and Geeks, one of the best television shows ever created, um, and including James Franco right there in the middle, Seth Rogen. Um, anyway, the just as a as a way to show you some of the tools that we're going to be using you can find this very image in your video tutorials files so if you'd like to play along with the, the same image as I'm doing it um, you can do it. it's called freaks geeks um, so uh, down the left hand side is the toolbar that's where I'm going to be focusing the most in terms of giving you a tour in terms of what those tools do along the top we have our menus their edit menus and in image menus and so on, um, filter menu as well. Uh, this is our main working window with the image that we're going to be processing and if we have multiple images open um, they'll be tabbed along the top here. Over here on the right hand side uh, is our layers, our channels and, and such and our, a whole bunch of different adjustments that we can make in terms of exposure and brightness and curves. We'll talk about those in further lessons. So let's focus our energy back on these tools down the side in the toolbar here. The, starting from the top, this one here is the move tool. Um, and so that allows you to move the image or parts of the image around. Um, if you put show transform controls and click that in, um, it actually turns it and you can transform it in any which way you'd like. It's like a free free transform tool um, which we'll talk about later. Here's uh, the marquee tool and if you click and hold on uh, the mouse you'll notice that you get different options rectangular, elliptical and things. Uh, that just changes the, changes the uh, shape that you're selecting. Essentially what that does is just selects a part of the window um, so that if you go in and then with your paintbrush you paint, you'll only paint inside that that little, the, what are called marching ants, that little selection right there. Um, and for the, the next one down is the lasso tool. Um, the lasso tool is just another selection tool. If you have the selection tool you can uh, freeform draw and it does the same thing where, where it selects the the items. The next one down is called the magic wand and if you click it there's either a quick selection tool which we will use at times and the magic wand which we'll also use. Uh, it's a great little tool because it selects a, a similar color um, and so if you click on one spot it selects similar colors so it's, that's helpful if you're wanting to change the background or uh, select something that is all of the same color. There's different sample sizes. A point sample is a very specific sa sample size. If you do a 31 by 31 average, um, it, it sort of averages out the color that it's selecting. And then the tolerance, if you have a low tolerance, it's really picky in terms of the, uh, the amount of uh, colors that it selects. If you bring it up to 30, you'll notice if I click um, it, it is a lot less picky in terms of the color range that it, it's going to select. Um, so that's a pretty cool tool that we're going to be using. Next down the line, this is the crop tool. So you notice when I hit the crop tool, you've got these uh, edges that show up, and you can adjust the crop tool by moving the these edges up and down, and you can move the corners as well. Um, and if you double click then you're going to get it um, cropped into that area. You can also just draw where you're, you're hoping to crop and then double click inside that window and then you get that cropped. And then I'm just doing control Z to undo. Um, this is the eyedropper tool so um, like the magic wand it will select a color so here you can see point samples so it'll select that exact color you'll notice the color pops up right here at the bottom uh, left hand side there. Um, so if you wanted to use that color to then paint um, that you, you 
can select that color so I can go with the eyedropper tool and select Seth Rogen's blue shirt and the blue that exact blue pops up um, this is uh, good for skin and whatnot this is, these are healing tools uh, for hiding blemishes and, and fixing up skin that we'll talk about later on in another tutorial um, they're pretty cool tools this is the paintbrush like you know like your classic Microsoft paint tool and if you click down into it you also have a pencil tool which is very similar but a very fine line uh, that paints in the clone stamp tool uh, we'll be covering in a separate tutorial but it what it does is it takes us a source and let's take James Franco here and, um, duplicates it and clones it in another part of the image and so that's a lot of fun the clone stamp tool um, the history brush if I uh, get James Franco's doppelganger here back for a second um, the history brush is like an edit a sp an edit undo button but in a specific spot so it's like I'm painting in an undo function instead of just going edit undo um, and editing, doing, undoing that whole step, you can like specifically edit undo in terms of, uh, oh, I, you know, got too much. I didn't want Busy Phillips' face. I just wanted James Franco. There you go. So that, that's a history brush. The, the eraser brush will erase right out. Um, the paint bucket tool, uh, is better more used for graphics and stuff rather than the photographs but it it will fill a certain area with uh, a paint color um, there's also a gradient tool that you can drag and you make a line and it makes these crazy um, gradients whether they're circular or linear um, this is the blurring tool and the sharpen tool so if I go I've got this this tool and I go over faces they start to blur out. It's only at 50% strength, so it's, it's a little subtle. If I bring it up you know, 100%, you're going to start to blur it out really, really quick. And then the opposite is the sharpen tool. And so just make the brush bigger. If you want to sharpen it up, if something's blurry in your image, you can make it quite sharp and you can very quickly overdo it. As you can see, I'm doing it on James Franco's face there. The dodge and burn is a th is a tool very much like the old darkroom techniques, which we'll use for photographs. The burning is when you're actually darkening in a certain area. So you can see I can darken in a certain shadow area or enhance shadows. The dodge tool is the exact opposite, where I'm you're uh, making the highlights more dramatic which is a really cool tool. That's a very photographic tool. The pen tool is a pretty, this next one is a pen tool, pretty complicated tool. I'm gonna to leave that one for now. The text tool is your, like your standard, you know, paint, uh, click into the window and you can type in, in there on top and it makes a whole text layer in and of itself. Um, and down here is a path selection tool. Again, we're going to talk about that later. And down here, I'm going to skip over some of the, the move tools. The, there's the zoom tool where you can zoom in on the specific areas of the face and zoom back out. Um, down here is where you have your color selecting, your foreground and your background color. So you notice when I've been painting, I've been painting with that same blue that I selected Seth Rogen earlier. Uh, you can flip that so you got the black in the background that is helpful for some erase functions and stuff like that. And if you want to just get it back to black and white, you've got this little icon there that you just click and it goes back to black and white. So there you go. There's a f just a few of the tools running down the side for Adobe Photoshop CS6.